60 seconds. Can somebody get Buzz off the phone? Nate, how's LA? How's the TV show? Actually, they suck. Check this out. I got you down. All right. How you doing? Welcome to the Buzz. show. My name's Buzz. 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 What? Don't do that. That's my thing, Buzz. Yeah, right. You're the greatest, Nate. <clears throat> All right. Sorry about that. Oh, oh, what time? What time is it? Oh, oh, my God. What do you... Do you know what time it is? It was sleeping. How many people are playing? Oh, poor you. You don't have any friends today. Oh, well. Let's have your name. Uh, one other thing. Are you looking for a full 21 question game or more like, uh, you know, a seven question dealie? You want it, you got it. Can we say it together? Okay, your buzzer is letter B. That's B as in, uh, bet you wish you were playing the game right now. On three. One, two, three. 20 seconds. 20 seconds, 20 seconds, all right. Uh, when you when you know an answer, buzz in. If you don't, don't. But if you buzz in, you only got a few seconds to pick one of the choices or you're gonna lose cash, all right? 10 seconds. Okay, is everybody set? Nine, Very good, okay, lose eight, the desktop, please. Seven, okay, and go to black. Five, don't forget to try four, the even slower cooking. Three, Stand by. Cross the line of good taste into great taste. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. Hey, all right, how you doing? Welcome to the show. Looks like it's just the two of us. You ready to party? All right, go ahead and pick one. Let's have some fun. Here comes question one. Category, let's do it. People who eat people. Two G's for a right answer. Okay, imagine this. Barbara Streisand is making a sequel to the 1972 comedy What's Up Doc called What's Up Papa Doc, co-starring a famous dictator. Based on the country he ruled, where might they film it? Haiti, India, Tibet, or Uganda? Here's what you should have picked. Papa Doc Duvalier brutally ruled over Haiti for 14 years. Memories of the time you flogged my feet, bloody blistered, tattered memories. Oh. Ah! <coughs> Come on, we need a category. Here comes question two. It'll make you feel brand new. This one's gonna be women to admire. And this one's worth $2,000. Okay, heads up. I want you to take a look at this picture and tell me which of the following best describes this scene. Elizabeth Berkeley's new job, Florence Lady of the Nightingale, Statue of Liberties, or Molly Pitcher clothes on the floor. Take it! It's a picture of the Statue of Liberty doing a strip tease. So the best answer is... <laughs> Statue of Liberty. And after standing there for a hundred years, I'd probably want to get dolled up and shake it a little too. Okay, pick a category. Put on your pants for the naked dance. Three. And we call this one... No more hoes. Okay, the right answer nets you 1,000 bucks. All right, here we go. Millionaire J.R. Ewing's gardener is getting married, but before the fateful day, he wants to have one last crack at spreading his seeds. Which of the following actions would not qualify? Offering his celery to J.R., giving Pamela his peanuts, delivering his rice to Sue Ellen, or sending Bobby his corn. It's all yours! Nope, he must have been trying to catch up for all of her weddings that he missed. Too bad you didn't choose this. Uh. Celery is a vegetable and we eat the stock. Why is Gardner is giving JR anything after getting those bath towels as a Christmas bonus is beyond me. How about it? We need a category. Shake it up the floor! Shake it up the floor!
The category is, I'd rather have a popsicle. This might be a hard one, three grand. Get your fingers ready, here's one coming at ya. Which of the following people would most likely receive a frozen rope? A prostitute, a shortstop, a trapeze artist, or a cowboy? I think not. Too bad you didn't pick this. A frozen rope is another name for a hard hit line drive. And if the shortstop commits an error on the play, the manager might be looking for a rope of a warmer variety. Pick your pick, what do you say? Number five. This category is, The Farmer Eats His Wife. Get it right, get 2,000 bucks. It's time to fill in the blank. Limber up those fingers. When you know the answer, buzz in and start typing. In a bestial porno movie, the mouse is being eaten by the cat who's being eaten by the dog who's being eaten by his owner. The film is appropriately called The Blank Chain. Okay, let's see if you know it. Type in your answer and hit return. The food chain, you highly evolved mammal, you. The star of our porno pet movie wouldn't swallow, so he had to hold his nose and rub his throat. Okay, pick a category. Oh, this is really big. This thing is huge! Sex! The category. The God of Hollywood Squares. And this one's going to be worth $1,000. Okay, get your fingers ready. Let's get busy. If actor Paul Land were really the character he played on Bewitched, what could he have done as one of the featured celebrities on the game show Hollywood Squares? Used his ad experience to boost ratings, talked about life as the second there, and spontaneously disappeared from Center Square or rudely asked, what shows are they doing next door? It's all yours! He played a mischievous warlock on Bewitched, so if he wanted, he could disappear from Center Square whenever he felt like it. But it wouldn't be a big deal. I'm sure they could have found some other out-of-work actor to replace him. Alright, go ahead and pick one. Okay, coming up, this category is... Ask me a question. 3,000 bananas for a right answer here. Okay, hang tight. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Here's the question. Based on the literal English translation of their name, which of these people could you accurately call a battle axe? Connie Chung, Yoko Ono, Pat Morita, or Mother Teresa? And over here we have the right answer. <laughs> ono oh is a Japanese word for a specific type of battle axe. Although there is no truth to the rumor that Yoko means nails on a chalkboard banshee shriek. Come on, we need a category. Excellent choice. It's time to play Dis or Dad. Category for this dis or dat question is Cops, Private Eyes, and Wall Street. All right, I'm gonna read off seven names to you, and for each one, I want you to tell me if it's one of those buddy action shows or a Fortune 500 company. As each one comes up, if it's a TV show, press one. If it's a Fortune 500 company, press two. And if you wanna skip, press four. The right answer will net you $500. And you lose 500 for each one you get wrong, or that you don't get to. Okay, give me 30 seconds on the clock. Here we go. Starsky and Hutch, TV show or compass. Simon and Simon. Raptor and Gamble. Hardcastle and McCormick. Black and Decker. Johnson and Johnson. Last one, Owens and Miner. That's all she wrote. 
Missed three, but you got four. That's slightly above average. The thrill of mediocrity, huh? Hey, better than losing money, huh? Let's go on. Take your pick. What do you say? It's party time. Here comes number nine. Category. When you eat way too much chili. 2,000 bucks for right answer. Hang on tight, because here we go. Where are you likely to find the greatest number of raging cases of butt rot? A meatpacking plant, a cigarette factory, a child daycare center, or a tree farm? Take it! <coughs> Shoulda picked this. Butt rot is a disease that attacks the trunks of trees. But I think Pinocchio also suffered occasional flare-ups. Okay, pick a category. Hey, Master Blaster! Won't you find an answer? It's ten! And this category is... What the hell are you doing with those calipers? Three thousand bucks for this one. Alright, my favorite. It's a question about genitals. Not that it matters or anything, but which of these primates has the biggest testicles? Humans, chimpanzees, gorillas, or gibbons? Let me take a second of my time to show you what's right. Chimpanzee males all mate with a female in estrus. In an effort to outshoot the competition, they've developed enormous testicles. And they look really silly in speedos. Halfway there, ten more questions coming at ya in round two. Now remember, round two means double the value of the questions, which means more cash won or more cash lost. Let's go. How about it? We need a category. The category is... If you're thirsty for ratings, have some cherry pop. Get this right, get $2,000. Okay, peel your eyes, free your mind, cause here we go. Which of the following young TV characters did not lose his or her virginity after wrestling with a decision on a very special episode of his or her respective TV show? Brenda from Beverly Hills 90210, Natalie from The Facts of Life, Webster from Webster, or Doogie from Doogie Hauser, MD. It's all yours! I was like, I'm totally great, cool! <laughs> Webster was eight years old. Of course he didn't lose his virginity. All he ever lost was his charm. Take your pick, what do you say? Twelve. And this question's category is... Don't have to be interesting if you're breathy enough. 2,000 bucks riding on this one. Okay, take a shot at this. You know that woman who sings the 80s hit Smooth Operator? Her name is spelled S-A-D-E. How the heck do you pronounce that? Sade, Sadie, Sad, or Sod? Go for it! It's pronounced Sade. <laughs> nice work, you really made the grade. I mean, Marday the Grarday. All right, go ahead and pick one. Take the elevator up to 13. All right, next up. Chips, dips, and what else? Looks like a toughie, six grand. All right, fingers limber, cause here comes the question. You probably have a pretty good idea of how the Marquis de Sade spent his life. How did he end it? He died while having sex in prison. He died while exiled to Tasmania. He died in an insane asylum or he got off scot-free but still died. It's all yours! The Marquis de Sade died in an insane asylum. <laughs> I think he went nuts because everyone kept calling him the Marquis de Chardet. Come on, we need a category. Remember your dreams, 14. This category is...
I don't like the way you're talking. This one's worth six grand. Check this out. Before the great vowel shift of the Middle Ages, how would English speakers have pronounced Mickey Mouse? Mickey Moose, Mookie Mees, Mucky Mice, or Makey Mace? Take it! The great vowel shift featured the switching around of the pronunciations of long vowels. <laughs> So does that mean the hats they sold at Medieval Disneyland had big antlers on them? Pick your pick, what do you say? Boy, I want your 15. Category, let's do it. Kids Games and the Pope. We are talking four big ones. Okay, imagine this. In Pope Heaven, all the former popes get together and play a huge game of Red Rover. What command will create the largest stampede? Is it Red Rover, Red Rover, send Pope Pius right over, send Pope John right over, send Pope Paul right over, or send Pope Lester right over? It's all yours! There have been six Pope Pauls, one Pope Peter, and uh, here in 78, there were a few stray votes for Pope Peter, Paul, and Mary. In case you're interested, here's the right answer. Uh, there have been 23 Pope Johns. That's enough to have their own pickup game of Pope football. Let's try the Hail Mary play, all right? <laughs> How about it? We need a category. Uh-oh, press what's with Mime Door. It's time for... The category for this gibberish question is... Recipes for yucky drinks. And we're gonna start off with 10,000 greenbacks for this one. Remember, speed's the key. The quicker you solve this, the more money you take away. Okay, get ready and tell me with what popular expression does this rhyme? Steeping cup with the stone pads. First hint, it describes buying something. Beating the recession? Buying something because your neighbors bought one. Go nuts! Type in your answer and hit return. Of course, if your neighbor is Barnaby Jones, you shouldn't have any problem. Okay, pick a category. This one's gonna be... Whose town is this anyway? 4,000 bucks behind this one. Alright, here we go. Which of the following are in order the major events of Thornton Wilder's play Our Town? Kids fall in love, can't marry, both die. Kids fall in love, get married, girl dies. Kids fall in love, get married, boy dies. Or kids die, girls reincarnated, marries horse. Go for it! Our Town, in which George Gibbs and Emily Webb fall in love, get married, and Emily kicks the bucket. <laughs> probably seen it a dozen times, but since you keep falling asleep in the middle of it, each time seems like the first time, right? Come on, we need a category. The category. Gang initiations throughout history. Get this right, you're bringing home 6K. Okay, get your fingers ready, let's get busy. Based on when the Great Wall of China was first constructed, what's the very first graffiti that could have been painted on it? When Nero fiddles, it burns. Hannibal does it with elephants. Genghis Khan or Cleopatra has a nice ass. Around 200 BC, the Great Wall of China was being constructed and Hannibal was marching his troops and his elephants across the Alps. <laughs> and with Hannibal's temper, it's no wonder the Vandal went all the way to China before expressing an opinion. Pick your pick, what do you say? Question, question, question 19. And 
and we call this one Fried Dough and the Classics. Get it right, get 2,000 bucks. Hang on tight, cause here we go. Okay, you're going to the carnival with your buddy Narcissus. Given his little problem, where should you avoid taking him? The Hall of Mirrors, the Ferris Wheel, the Tilt-A-Whirl, or the Bumper Cars? It's all yours! Narcissus is famous for falling in love with his own reflection. He stared at it till he turned into a flower. <laughs> In the Hall of Mirrors, I wonder if he'd prefer the Narcissus with the really big head or that one over there with the bendy stomach. Alright, go ahead and pick one. Superstar. No special. 20. The category is... A whole lot of nothing. And this one's worth $4,000. According to the philosophy of nihilism, nothing has meaning. Because its manufacturer has a patent for nothing enclosed by a circle, which of the following products might be embraced by nihilists? Hula hoops, Dunkin' Donuts, Lifesavers, or Lenders Bagels? Take it! Here's a little spending money. Now the correct answer is... Lifesavers! So what if life is really an unknowable, empty non-existence? You still need fresh breath. Okay, pick a category. that match buzz in a right answer nets you two grand but every wrong answer drops you down two grand listen not all matches are true remember the clue only buzz in on a match that fits this clue wanna go for a run mate i hope so if not your score may go down under good luck Good show, everybody. Um, let's roll commercials and Cookie, what's going on here? Hey, you made
made it to the high scoreboard. Not much of an accomplishment since it was totally empty. Anyway, let me know if you want to play again. Or, of course, you could quit while you're ahead. Many people are physically unable to produce their own mucus. For them, phlegm is just a dream. The reality is they're left high and dry. But with your help and others like you, life-enriching and body-cleansing mucus can be gathered, purified, and redistributed to the folks who really need it.